Hello everyone, welcome to the Northern Artist Conversation. My name is Mark Kelly, I am your host, your guide, your master of ceremonies. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, always super cool to have you uh, either either watching or listening. Um, thank you for your continued support, it's always good. Um, you know, we've got uh, some amazing guests coming up. Um, a lot of really cool guests starting to come out of the woodwork. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time behind me. Uh, sorry, behind not behind me. Behind the computers today is producer Andrew. Um, it's really cool. We've uh, got some awesome things coming up soon as well. A few kinks to work out, a few little bugs, uh, but we're definitely looking forward to it. So it's going to be great. I'm going to flick to my camera. Um, today's guest is um, amazing, Julia Tap. Um, what an incredible story she uh, shared with us from growing up uh, out west. Like Outrageous Fortune, um, you know, Cheryl West and, and all those characters, um, through to, uh, you know, oh, you know what? I'm not going to give too many spoilers away. I tell you what, no, I can't go, no, I'm not even going to give that one. But I will say this, I will say this, the lady has certainly had a life and what a life it's been, just um, unbelievable story after story after story. I'm going to shut up. You guys can enjoy this. Let's sit down and have a conversation with Julia Tapp. Don't really get a choice. And that's how we start. It's just kind of one of those freaky things. I don't know why I'm holding my phone. Why am I holding my phone and not my notes, Producer Andrew? I'm grabbing the notes. I know, very rude of me. How dare I? Julia Tapp, thank you for joining us on the North and Artist Conversation. I do appreciate it. Oh, it's lovely to be here. I know. And we've obviously yep. tried to make this happen for a wee while. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you're, you're not the only one that it's happened to. But life kind of getting in the way of shit. Uh, yeah, definitely. Since yeah. since twenty twenty. Yeah. 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 Life in the way of shit. Yep, definitely. Very, very, very much of the carnage. Um now this is this is cool because I didn't know we've probably kind of already met by osmosis. Um uh, we've we've met through well pos potentially met through um Aru and Plunge. Yep. yep. Uh big shout out to Aru Singh. I'm gonna point straight down the camera. Aru. You're a legend. Uh, looking forward to plunge Kitty Kitty uh, uh, towards the end of August. Uh, make sure you get involved. Anyway, I digress. Um, but yeah, because you you do what do you do at the plunge? Oh, so at the plunge festival, yeah. I'll be doing um, airbrush tattoos. So get your tats on. Right, yeah. And I'll be doing some face painting and yes. um, original characters. So um, I'll be painting bodies. Right. Now, because I, I do recall seeing the face paint. Now, you weren't at the last one, I don't were think you? so, no. I was at, I think it was the first one. Oh, the, the very first. Yeah, and right. possibly the second, but I yeah. missed the last one. Okay, so the one they had this year was held at the Kensington Stadium. Uh, uh, last year was, and I think all the subsequent ones before that were the 116. One one yeah. yeah, there we yeah. go. Um, and that's how producer Andrew and I met. I know. It was not love at first sight. I was going to say how romantic. I know. Excuse me? You're excused. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome to a new feature. This is the first time we've ever been able to do that as well. So we're very excited. We're playing with all the toys. You're the first one that gets to sit down with a whole bunch of new technical shit. So we're like, Excellent. this will be a great podcast. So Andrew might get involved in amongst shit. But that's fine. Just ignore him. That's fine. I do. Um, now... Uh, you don't just do uh, body paint and uh, face painting and stuff like that. What what would you say is your main artistic expression? Ooh, yeah, I know that's a tricky one. Yeah, because so. you're you're quite diverse, but it all seems to revolve around uh, well, mostly around the airbrush and yeah. custom arts. Yeah. So those are my two specialist areas. Um, custom arts is bespoke art, so yeah. anything that you want personally done, or um, in short, I specialize on putting that image onto that surface. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, they, now, they had um, uh, the charity auction for Northland Hospice. 
where artists submitted like something for is it that sort of thing where it's like very bespoke it's not a i'm going to churn out you know well, mass kind of, quantities most, of one thing it's mostly custom order right so okay, okay. 90 percent of what i do is ordering specifically for the customers so I have to take their vision they've had in their head most of their life. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Put that onto paper, usually with a crayon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I send it to my daughter Zoe, who photoshops it all up, and then we like play with layout and turn it into a reality and put it on like their I don't know their car or their dress or their oh, wow. coffin or shoes or coffee table, coffee or, table, or, or anything really. Right. Yeah. I flamed up up a few shitters now. So. Um, I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me just quickly, <laughs> we're not going to gloss over that moment. You <laughs> flamed up a few shitters. Yeah. That's what you said, right? Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. Now, you fl- fl- mm, flamed, you mean like you set a toilet on fire? I would love to say I set a toilet on fire, but um, not no. for the last 10 years. Okay. Um, or I've after a dodgy painted curry? painted toilets on fire. Right, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I've, yeah, no I curry. don't know why. No, Just that's fine. Whatever that's people want painted. Wow. Okay. Now, <laughs> as, so, <laughs> as someone who works with an airbrush, yeah. that's not a skill that you pick up overnight, is it? So where did art or, or paint and, and those sorts of things, where did that first start for you? Let's. We're going to go way, way back. back. Where did this artistic side of you come from? Fourth, has it always been there? It's always been there. Yeah. I come from a fairly arty family. So yeah. mum and dad were actually specialists in their field originally. Um, it was like nursing and parts and things. And they had four kids that are all artists, musicians, actors. Oh, and, wow. Okay. And um, utterly not what they were wanting their kids yeah. to achieve in life. But, yeah. you know. Not they, academic. <laughs> not academic, no. no. Um, and so... It was interesting. Like, I think art was not only as cliche as it is always an escape, because I grew up in 1980s in West Auckland, like in the middle of Henderson. Oh, hell. So, um, Respect the bogan. (laughs) It's like literally down the street from where the Wests were filmed. So I was like, that's me. That's me. I'm Loretta. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Did you, Um, and you identified with, uh, like the, um, the leopard print and. Yeah. And we went, we had (laughs) like the tough, I still wear leopard print. I'm sorry. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. No judgment. It's yep. a safe zone. I'm still into the, the fast cars and the bikes, and yep. and that's where that passion started. And, of course, being any kid in West Auckland, I yep. was like, I want to paint cars, you know? So wow. every kid wants to paint on their parents' car, right? Um, Maybe? I, uh, oh, I'm... You know, I... Uh, <laughs> may, um, I don't know how to answer. I'm going to say some... <laughs> You know, I, I think I think the hardest part no. of my job is explaining to small children. No, I'm allowed to paint on the walls, but you yes, are not. Yes, that that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So, how old would you say you were when you first kind of picked up? Well, like, well, like a paintbrush, really, wouldn't it? Because well, you wouldn't have gone straight. Did you go straight to an air gun? Or was, no, it, or was it like so, picking up brushes? Interestingly enough, like I started with pencils, just like, you know, angsty teenager drawing in their room. Right, okay. Uh, a lot of it was fantasy stuff. So wizards, dragons, witches. I oh, did some stuff cool. for uh, D&D books and role-playing books as well. <laughs> nice. So those were my first publications. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's D and D, a couple of things, and some. I think it was pagan moon calendars. Oh wow! Yeah, and so I did a little bit of that for a while, yeah. but there wasn't a lot of a following or commercial income in fantasy art when you're trying to raise kids. No. So no, I kind of yeah. like put the fantasy yeah. painting aside okay. and um, decided to take an airbrushing course. Oh, which we right. had seen. Okay. Yeah, and a yep. few people had gone, can you paint my cars? And I'm like, what, with oil paint? But I like to do things properly. So yeah, yeah, when yeah. this course came to New Zealand, um, I enrolled in the course. That was in 2009, I think. Oh, wow. So that's How actually really years? recent. Yeah, yeah. 2009 is only 14 years ago. Good math. Thank you. I can count backwards. Yeah, um, 14 years. <laughs> 14 yeah. years ago. That's That doesn't seem like that long ago. 
No. Because, no. because you're 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 eighties kid, right? Yep. Eighties kid. Love the eighties. Recently rediscovered pseudo echo. That's right. <laughs> they took me to Funky Town. Um <laughs> Um, but you know, having having moved from you know, because you would have done what 20, 20 years of non airbrush work. So yeah. was it like twenty years of like um, all fantasy stuff, fantasy stuff, um, doing you... anything other than what the art teacher said? Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, sketching lots of lots of really dark spiritual stuff in my teenage years. Okay, right. It, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pag- um, paganism type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've got like, a really cool picture of Satan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the I, one. I think I think you and I probably went through quite a similar phase. Might have been me and Satan, I'm not sure. Possibly, yes. Yeah, yeah I never had that one. I wasn't, I wasn't that chummy with him. But, but thinking back on that now, though, like... That's all expression and how people... What is? You know, demons better out than in, right? Absolutely. That's <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Best to have those, de- you know, purge those demons. And I guess, in a way, that's a way of you to kind of channel things. So yeah. you're, you know, um, people that have a creative expression, I you know, tend to be... Um, very flowing with their work. Um, you know, we all, and I think I think this is a fair comment to say, we can all have moments where we stop and it's like, I've got nothing. Yeah. Whether it be writer's block. Is, is painter's block a thing? I feel Ooh, like it yes. is. Okay. Um, and then, you know, then, then you kind of pick it up again. You're reinvigorated by your love. You've, you've found something that's yeah. kind of inspired you again. When you... We're doing the the dragons and, and stuff like that. And you're getting asked to paint cars. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going, this is something I'd like to do. Car art would be the best art. Or are you still going, well, I I like being able to roll a 12 with a two-sided dice and, and have a um, Gorlock the Destroyer. Um, where are you sort of thinking at that point? Um, so, oh gosh, block your ears, LARPers and Dungeon Masters. My partner at the time was heavily into role playing and and all sorts of uh, some vampire game or reenactment thing they used yeah. to do in the nineties or whatever I don't know, and I never was into that side of it. I just thought the wizards and warlocks and witches and dragons were cool. Okay, right. So I mean, and I thought cars were cool. It really was. I like art. I like cars. Right. Yeah. Very much a, a West Auckland thing. Yeah. 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 We've had um, another guest on the show um, from West Auckland as well. It's a lovely place. Um, thank you. Thank you. As she calls herself, I repeat her words, not mine, Jess Hess the Mess from out west. That um, is beautiful. A lovely guest. She was super cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she talked about growing up at West Auckland as well. Um, yeah, it so was yeah. wild. Yeah, definitely mm. the wild. I'm going to quote Will Smith, the Wild Wild West. Um, mm-hmm. Don't laugh there, Producer Andrew. Um, or you can, just don't laugh into the microphone. Thank you. Um, so so you, you do all this drawing and you do all this art and then kids happen, right? Kids happened. Kids yep. happen. And then are you still creating or are you just like, you know what? I don't have time for this shit. I've got to be a parent. Yeah, so for the early part of my children's life, yep. um, I didn't have time for that shit. I was being a parent. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I was a solo parent as well for most of it. So oh, wow. for the okay. first, like, oh, gosh, maybe five years, I think I was a solo mum. Yeah. Um, and ironically, one of my best friends who we never, ever, ever thought we'd ever get together, who's now my husband... Hey! <laughs> there Whoa, you go. What are the odds of that? <laughs> what are the odds of that? That's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> um, so we ended up getting together, and um, oh gosh, I forgot the question. I've got ADHD. That's all right. What was the question? Um, the question is: Were you still creating while you were having? Yeah, you know, while oh, you were raising children. He was so supportive. Children, like yeah. he's a singer and a musician, so it was just so nice to finally meet a partner who understood that you couldn't take art or music out of someone like yeah yeah my 
partner before that literally said you have to choose between me and the art and the music and performance. And wow. well, he is my ex. He's an ex for a reason, right? That's it. And then yeah. I uh, took off with a singer. Best decision ever. Yeah, I mean, it could have been a bassist. Uh, yeah. Um, that, that's, the, yeah. that's the bad choice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> As a musician, I'm allowed to say that too. Um, so you and your you and your husband, right? Then start embarking on this journey, and he's like, "Go forth and paint and discover." Yeah. And he's you know living the the muso life as yep. well. Um, with two people being with there being such a massive amount of creativity in the house, because there would be. Um, how did you find that that worked for you with your with parenting? Um, it actually worked really good because it turns out that every single one of our children are also neurodivergent. Right. So yes. they probably couldn't have been brought up or have functioned in a neurotypical household. Right. So, yes, that explains a lot. <laughs> that's it. Like these kids, um, on on the side, we ran a circus at the same time, and these kids were brought up like. Well, I mean, that's, as, I'm sure that's how most parents feel about their children. Uh, th- uh, yeah, raising yeah. Raising a circus, but but they were sleeping in tents and oh, hanging and out with the, with the stilt walkers. Wow. So so um, it couldn't have been anything other than a neurodivergent family. That's brilliant. That's, yeah. What a hell of a story. It came like in the time in between my publications and my fantasy time and getting into Airbrush. Yes. There was a point where I was like, I can be a full time performer. Yes. Or I can be a full time artist. And I knew I'd always have my art and professional performing. Um, to be honest, and don't hate me for this world, but by the time you get to kind of late 20s to early 30s your knees are buggered and you just can't pursue a career like we were doing 50 shows a year wow and you just can't sustain that many physical shows a year yeah. on a you know mid 20 to 30 year old body so yeah. yeah i ended up having an accident broke both my legs um and really yeah and and so i gave up the circus <laughs> <laughs> um and um did my airbrushing cuz well I don't I don't have to do cartwheels while I do that. Okay, I I have questions yep. and I'm sure our listeners and viewers do as well. The circus. Yes. What <laughs> God, I don't even know where to start unpacking that one. Um, what did you do? What was your job or jobs uh, in the in the circus? Because so, cartwheels is an interesting thing. I'm sure there's more to it than just I was the lady that wandered around the circus going, hey oh, just cartwheels everywhere. Money for the poor. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, sorry. Okay. <laughs> that was the job sometimes, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. So, whew. So we actually started as a group of fire dancers. So, you know, the fire spinners. Oh, yes. Yep. It all started with a flame. Wow. And, of course, a few fire dancers get together and then drummers come along and then there were belly dancers. And then before you knew it, there was enough of us that we were like, hey, together as creatives, no one can get into these corporate events because no one had the insurances. They didn't have promo packages. They didn't yeah, have that, yeah, yeah. what used to be called left brain dominant marketing right. skills. Yeah. So we actually opened up an umbrella company which catered for all of these acts and we specialized in yeah medieval entertainment, reenactment, and essentially events would hire us under one lump sum and just go, the entertainment? Is your problem right now. okay so yeah. it's like here's some cash whatever you deal with the monkeys yeah and, yeah, yeah wow yeah. okay that's so interesting because jess hess um is a part of uh fire frenzy oh gosh my son's just started going there yeah yeah, yeah. wow and, crazy and there's a guy uh pete wyatt everyone knows pete and pete was part of the circus that we started up Brilliant. and he was the drummer who randomly came along wow. so this is like years ago yeah yeah, yeah. We, this is like early 2000s eh? yeah i thought about yeah. going to fire frenzy but i don't want to be that weird 40 year old in the corner with their spinning stick no it's great um i i went down 
and I've 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 actually watched them work, and they, um, you know, the, what they do is absolutely killer. It's um, every Friday um, yeah. down by is it Polhi Island? Uh, uh, it's it's underneath. Um, thank you, producer Andrew. Um, it's down by Polhi Island, and um, yeah, it's under it's under a big uh, roof, and it's absolutely amazing. It's so cool. I went there, watched, and felt like a complete idiot. But yeah. I loved my time and took some great photos. They were so cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, so don't, don't be shy. Go down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I should, eh? And, you should. And that's sort of like, when I say circus, I don't mean like clowns and well, car that, circus. That's what I was thinking, to be it, honest. Yeah, no, no. It was fire dances and belly dances. Wow. And we had some Irish dances. Just, yes. It was very traditional i think there was a voodoo group as well for a while that doesn't seem traditional they they well she was haitian possibly in haiti traditional yeah i, I dare right. i say it, probably not maybe not new zealand i don't recall the weber brothers having uh any haitian acts turn up but and perform did these you scary know shit? new zealand yes. does have a haitian voodoo princess we uh what now paula yeah so um okay paula needs a better name yeah, That's Paula. Paula. Yeah, she's she's married to a snake, I believe. What? Yeah, there's what? there's a documentary about it. What, like um, an actual, like a snake entity or a... entertainers? What was that you were saying about creepiest guests? <laughs> no, no, this is not creepy. So, first off, I think a Haitian princess should have a better name than Paula. Right, unless the name, unless the steak's name is Bob, um, because <laughs> it's just too common. Bob Snake. <laughs> Bob Bob the Snake. Um, because a Haitian princess should have a a, a, a much more um, yeah befitting name of a princess. Yeah, not like Elsa. Um, yep. She's a nice cold bitch. Anyway, anyway, um, I digress. Weird circus stuff. It's fine. We're gonna let it go. Let um, it go. Well, now, wow. Okay, now this doesn't this only doesn't even take us up to two thousand and nine, does it? When you, you now, yeah. how did you break both of your legs? Two thousand and nine. How? I fell off the back of a truck. Well, I was doing a round off, while well, spinning some fire. Again, <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Funny, funny. Um, producer Andrew has got a habit of breaking both arms and getting concussed. Nice. Um, so if anyone can relate it, it'll it'll be him. Um, Go team. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's great because you guys have something in common. You don't do just one. It's like, a, fuck it, I'm better than everyone. I'll do both at the same time. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It was interesting too because even back then, like, we had a few, like – reporters and we were kind of well known and the yeah. headlines were artist falls off back of truck and there is genuinely a newspaper article where it is yeah artist falls off back of truck north and artist conversation are incredibly proud to support the quarry arts center Quarry Arts Centre, amazing place, uh, located on Selwyn Ave in Whangarei. Um, such a wonderfully beautiful venue. Um, they are a, an art gallery and they have some amazing exhibitions and they also hold um, Te Kōwhai Print Trust as well. Um, another really, really cool um, artistic endeavour uh, that's done as well. Um, they will have different exhibitions and shows of all different types of uh, medium available as well and they're such a, a long-standing uh, venue in the community as well. Um, highly recommend you checking them out. Fantastic place. Uh, really, really cool to take the uh, the kids and family as well. So, um, North and Arts Conversation, proud to support the Quarry Arts Centre. Um, so you're, you're, you're out of the circus. It's all done. 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 It's all gone. It's yep. like, it's, it's over. Yeah. And then you, you make a conscious decision to pick up the, the airbrush. Yes. And, and learn and study. Correct. Now, uh, one question I always ask, um, anyone really that's, that's any, any kind of, got any type of creative output is, do you have anything from when you first started? Any artworks? Yeah. Did you keep any? Or you're like, trash, trash, trash. Eh, maybe. 
trash. I do have one at <laughs> really? home. Really? I gave it to my mum yeah. and she gave it back. But the rest got given away or went in the trash or I sold them. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, obviously, after how many years were you sort of able to sell your first piece? Oh, gosh. Or we're talking months because that would be impressive. It was a three-week training course. Okay. Wow. So, I was really blessed. And after this three weeks of airbrush training, I suppose it was a bit like if you have someone who's naturally a singer or a musician and they've been singing all their life and then you give them a guitar, Mm. they learn three chords and it's kind of like, holy crap, where is this? Where has this extension been? Yeah, absolutely. And I really clicked with the airbrush. So I finished top of my class for that three-week training program. Wow. Um, And then one of the artworks which I painted in there got me into my first gallery in Hamilton. um, Wow. And it sold... Oh, I can't remember the name of the gallery. Gosh, this is 2009. But What's yeah. Hamilton? Hamilton. Yeah. Sold in Hamilton in a gallery. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. it's Hamilton. Yeah. We don't need to really worry about Hamilton. <laughs> it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, it is. We love Hamilton, but it's in the past. Um, okay, so the, you, you, you take up airbrushing. I, I want to make sure I got this straight because this seems yeah. quite amazing. You do a three-week course in 2009. You have your first exhibition... Yep. In 2009, yep. you sell your first work in 2009. Yep. Holy shit, that's amazing. I, I was pretty impressed as well. And wow. The funny thing was I couldn't get into the galleries because to get into the galleries, you have to be an established artist with established works and oh, yeah, all yeah, the of, rest. Of course. Yeah. And I didn't have that. And I walked into this gallery and I was like, excuse me, will you take a look at me? And they're like, no because that's how it yeah, was back yeah. then. And my yeah. friend was actually painting at that gallery, and she used to wear, like, pearls and fur coats and stuff. And Righty-ho. I sent her in with my painting instead. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and um, she showed the gallery owners, and they went, oh, absolutely, and it right. ended up in the gallery. Yeah. And that was how I got... Yeah, because the you, gallery. <laughs> you weren't allowed to solicit, were you? No, no, absolutely not. So she was wow. just like, "Give me your painting. I'll put it in with one of mine, yeah. and it 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 worked." I've read some people on chats be like, "That's a bad idea," but oh, look at if it works, do it. It it launched my art career. Yeah. got me into the galleries, and that's. You know, I'll always say to to anyone else who's having trouble getting in, if you have got friends in the galleries, get them to show people yeah, your yeah, work. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Far out. These are what contacts are for. Yes, yes. And, you know, people in the... That's one thing I love about creatives, is that we always want to help other others succeed. Yep. And evolve and get better. Yeah. And then tall poppy syndrome happens. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate that. So... 2009. Now, we're not going to jump into a, in 14 years. We're not going to go, oh, in 2023. <laughs> what what happened in that 14 years? Because you see there's a lot that's happened. Oh, there is a lot. Okay, so, um, gosh. So since, I suppose the next step from the galleries yeah. was while I was still learning airbrush and doing commissions, because I was at professional level, but it was beginner professional, you know? Yeah. So I started my prices pretty low. I think it was like a hundred bucks a piece or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, and pumped out those for quite a few years, did the right. hard yards. Yeah. Um, entered quite a few art competitions, which was really neat, and got some shows as a live artist doing live demos. Oh, wow. So that was how I got into the show scene was instead of being a storeholder selling a product yeah. because I could finish these artworks reasonably quickly yeah. and I was pretty good at it. Quick turnaround, yeah, yeah. That's it. So I would paint one a day and one would go to the event to auction off for charity Yes. and the other one I would keep and then that would become part of my collection or I could right. sell it yeah. or or whatever else. And then some celebrities jumped on board and started signing them as well, which was pretty cool. Um, Let's have a few name drops, shall we? <laughs> um, I think the first one, these are going to be old school names. That's you fine. guys might not recognise well, them. Well, I'm older than you, so I okay. will 100% recognise um, them. Colin Meads was the first one. Oh, Pine Tree. Yeah. yeah the he, legend. He was amazing to see walking across the street. His eyebrows walked before he did. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was 
I know it looks like two cats have crawled on his face and died. Yeah, and, and then he's got these massive hands, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, Sir Meads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, Peter poetry. Poser, he was a, a guitarist in the 1950s in New Zealand. Yes. He toured with the Rat Pack and stuff, so he yep. became a good friend. Um, what are some more modern ones? Tikitane, Savage. Um, Savage. Yes, Savage. Yes, very nice. We were we were actually discussing Savage Demetrius. yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Do you want his phone number? No. Well, <laughs> maybe. Ah. Oh, uh, we'll talk later. We'll He's... talk later. <laughs> he seems like a nice guy. He's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, no. so I think like, and then there was a few international ones I met, but I didn't do their portraits. It's just like sharing, sharing shows and yeah, parking yeah. and and all the rest. And yeah, I'm pretty blessed, really. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, because there's not many Northland artists that can say they've, you know, met international people. I mean, we've we've had people yeah. on here that have like. Um, toured internationally or they've gone overseas and done yeah. some international work. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. Man, well, that was to... down in Waikato, <laughs> except for Savage. He came up here, so that was pretty right. cool. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he, respect to Savage. Yeah, yeah, the rest were down in Waikato. So, yeah, okay, yeah. well. Sorry. <sighs> yeah. I guess Waikato's got something for it. Yeah. So um, the plan for that was to do a, a Kiwi Icons exhibition, which was meant to be a fundraiser. Oh, wow. And I wasn't actually sure what I was fundraising for. I just had all these artworks where <laughs> one got auctioned to the um, for charity. I think Poor Justice <laughs> got the sale of one yeah. and a special needs school in Hamilton and a few other places. And with my ones, I was just collecting them, kind of going, ah. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, it was... We're coming up close to uh, 2013. I won the speed painting championships in New Zealand. Um, uh, the what? Um, they're like speed racing awards. You know, artist speed. You're timed and you've got to get up. and. Oh, wow. Uh, doesn't everyone know that? No. Anyway, so you've got two hours and you flip over a piece of paper and there's your picture. Yeah. And there might be like eight competitors on the stage and you've got two hours to create photorealism. And that's at the car shows, and that's yeah. like a fundraiser for Canteen. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. and then they're Great auctioned cause. off and sold. So everything we've done has always been for fundraisers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, and then it was 2014, we um, lost our little boy in an incident, mm. which was really horrific. That was nine years ago. But that's where my focus changed from yeah. going, yeah. I'm going to do these awards and I'm going to paint for me and I'm going to do this and that. Yeah. And, and and before that, like, my goal was to meet the people at the top. Yeah. And... You suddenly get new perspective. After that, I was like, oh, my gosh, none of that matters anymore. Yeah. It was all about the people and passing on those skills and... Yeah. And making sure that people have art, even if it's like, I don't know, threading some beads on a stick or strumming a guitar, yeah. even if it's one string, it's it's healing. So the whole perspective of mm. what we were doing flipped on its head in wow. one day. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, I mean, that's heavy. It, it, yeah. 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 Intense. Um, there's yeah. a huge legacy left behind and heaps of community work we do now, yeah. which is cool. Let's talk about that community work because you've obviously been doing that for, for quite a while now. And, you know, you, you had the Whangarei... Oh, it was the Northland Art Centre. Northland Art Centre. That yeah. was um, just down from the rock shop, eh? Yeah. Uh, ironically, yeah. our slogan was get the knack. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> you can use it if you like. NAC. <laughs> and that's how I found you guys. Oh, I was classic. actually trying to log into my account. Yeah. And I was like, hang on a minute. Who the hell are these North and Arms <laughs> conversation clowns? Who's, who's, who's the snack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why well, it's us. Wow, okay. Yeah. So yeah. nine years ago, life flips on a dime. Boom. Yeah. 180's out of nowhere. Yep. And then you start doing charity work and yep. work with communities and all that sort yeah, of Yeah, I donated sort of all thing. my autograph paintings to St. John's and um, things like that for fundraisers wow. and surf life saving as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, just really close causes that fought so hard to save our little boy because yeah. 
they weren't successful, but how can you ever thank someone enough for trying? You you you'll never stop I'm, thanking that person. I, yeah, well, yeah. well, and and a few of the medics were like, "Don't thank us, we failed." But the thing is, is they gave a chance. Yeah, they and did. And for Absolutely. that chance, that is what I am thankful for. Yep. You know, so um, yeah, wow. It's I've had a lot of time to really think some very deep thoughts. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, really puts you know things like that put everything into perspective. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll I'll share something with you. Um, uh, my son, um, about six years ago, um, his mum and him and her uh, partner at the time were doing a walk around the loop. Yeah. And um, he uh, just he wanted to go off and do his own thing, and she was like, "Yeah, that's fine." And they finished the loop, but they hadn't found him. Yeah. And then they started to panic because he was gone. <sighs> yeah. And. Um, Two guys, uh, Dylan and Scott, from the radio station. Uh, I don't, I don't want to get it wrong. It's, I think it might be Media Works. Yeah. Um, they happened to be doing the loop as well, and they saw this kid that was just in the playground by himself, and they there were no parents nearby. They didn't know what was going on, so they just went up and approached approached him, and yeah. he was a. You know, he, he, he gave, um, you know, he was like a bit standoffish, but um, still super chatty. That's my son. Yeah. And um, and Dylan ended up calling me through Messenger um, and he connected with me. <laughs> um, and by the time I'd got that message, his mum had, had found him. But, um, you know, I, to this day, every time I see both of those guys, I will go, go up and give them both a hug. And say thank you. And yeah. you know, there was an article in the paper, and this was you know six years ago. Aww, yeah. yeah, we had many people message us and say thank you for the articles we did do in the paper and the newspapers yeah. and stuff because um, our son actually went missing. He was autistic yeah. and um, went missing. And there's a few parents now that have messaged us when their autistic children have gone missing. The first place they've gone is to check rivers and swimming pools, yeah, yeah. and and there was one lady she messaged us just after, and she was like, "Because of your article, I got to my neighbor's house down the road. It was the first one she went to, mm. and her boy was on the ladder above the pool. Wow! And wow. we were just like, whoa! So yeah, we don't know how big an impact this no. this little boy has had." No idea, but um, he definitely has many legacies. And you've you've touched the lives of so many, and you know, out of something that's so hor- horrific and unfortunate, the the saying of no parent should ever have to outlive their child, um, you know, out of something that's so horrific has come so much positive. Yep, hundred percent, and and support that we were given. Yeah. So, um, another side of what we do in the community, and I haven't touched base with you with sure, this yet. Just rip it on out. <laughs> rip it on out yeah. is after his passing. So for about four years, I was still doing arts and crafts, but I didn't find a lot of joy in it. Like yeah. my mojo had gone. Yeah. Um, and the angel caster who took his hands and feet cast down in Waikato contacted me. Oh, cool. And asked nice. me if I'd like to train. Yeah. So I actually started training with her, and now we're the only angel casting, casting service from Auckland right up to Cape Prianga. Wow. Um, so you, it's all of Northland, yeah. All of Northland. So every family that would like hands and feet casts of their little angel. That's amazing. Or, or we go in and we collect donations and help dress them and just help parents through that process. Yeah. Because yeah. when we were thrown into that, it is literally like a shipwreck. I like to say it's like a shipwreck. Yeah. And at first you're just thrown around in the water and there's this really cool poem. I won't recite it, but it essentially says, oh, it's really long. It's written by an old man. Okay. He's like 70. We don't have time. No, and he probably doesn't either. <laughs> no, no. But it goes on about how at first you're holding on to bits of the ship and yep. then you might find someone to hold on to. And and then there's a life raft and you get out. And it sounds really bizarre, but I really feel as though I've learned to swim those seas enough Yeah. that I'm just like, hey, I'll just chill out in this ocean for a while and yeah. drag people to the lifeboat because when you don't know where that lifeboat is, it's a much longer swim. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So <sighs> chilling in the seas of destruction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really heavy. 
that's you know thank you so much I, I i certainly wasn't expecting to sort of have this conversation it's it's amazing um <laughs> i'm really I, I know honored it, i know it can't be easy because essentially you're 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 sort of reliving some of that stuff as well well you know i have to say it's not easy but because of how much good we know it brings, and especially yeah. with those casts and being able to let people know it's okay to touch and it's okay to hold and mm. things like that, knowing what we're doing for families, it sounds bizarre, but it actually makes it a much easier job because gone are the days of don't look, don't yeah. touch, don't yeah. acknowledge. Yeah. Now it's all about make your memories, have your time. Yeah. Get your photos and celebrate that life. Yeah, wow. Um, and and this is going to sound really strange, but gosh, I meet, get to meet so many little angels and families that mm. no one else gets to lay eyes on. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. even mum and dad or grandma and grandpa aren't, aren't well, yeah, in those rooms. Yeah, they're not privy to it, yeah. And... Usually it's just mum and dad there, and I'm the one who's blessed enough to yeah to see that soul and yeah. to to help prepare them. You're, in, so, you're, in, you're invited in on what will be as a, an incredibly painful and traumatic moment. And I think at first a lot of people were going, <laughs> "How do you not cry?" or "How do you not break down in the moment reliving yeah, it?" Yeah. But, again, through my deep thinking for nine years and probably a hint of disassociation through autism and whatever. Sure. I mean, we all cope in our own way. It's not my place to have their grief in that moment. Yep. Absolutely. Because they're having their moment. They're mm. having their grief. The last thing they need is me on the side crying and... Yeah all the rest as well. So it's kind of like you go home and then you sort of, I reflect on it while I'm finishing off the cast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but knowing how much good it does, I suppose it's a bit like, I see it a bit like a reverse paramedics job. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. We're, we're the last response yeah. unit. You're sort of the, the final piece of the puzzle. So to speak. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got, I've got, I've got tons of questions, but it's just like if something like that. It's you know these these podcasts themselves. <clears throat> we keep them nine times out of ten quite lighthearted. Yeah, and and they are. They're meant to be a good laugh. Um, I'm I'm reminded of um, theatre sports, or, or improvised theatre. Um. You know, most people think of uh, improvised theatre or theatre sports as comedy, 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 comedy. Yeah. Right. But when someone does a deeply dramatic scene, it hits a lot harder because you yeah. do not expect it. Um, and, you know, we started off quite light. Yeah. We've we've ended up in this place. I won't say of darkness, but it's 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 we've ended up in a place that's lit differently. Yeah, and I think that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, because it, this is part of your journey, yeah. and and you know I'm not going to sit here and deny it. When we talked at the start, I said I have no idea where this podcast is going to go, and I never do. So I wasn't sitting here going, right, well, there's a you know we're not going to talk about blah 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 and blah blah blah. It's like no no, we'll we'll go wherever you go, and I'll bring you back, um, and and we'll end up in a in a happy place together. Yeah. So thank you so much on behalf of um, myself and Andrew, who's with me now, and the Northern Artists Conversation team, and our listeners and viewers. Thank you so much for sharing that with us because that's yeah you know, hugely impactful. It's it's definitely our son's biggest legacy. Yeah, is, yeah, and and we see a, an average of one child a week. It's pretty heartbreaking oh, no. statistics. It's, it's a very tough statistic. Yeah, but um, as strange as it is, I love my job. Yeah, there is beauty even in these moments, and yep. if we're too overwhelmed with the darkness and the grief and the sadness, we don't see that beauty. Yeah. So there's just a really small gap to see that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So how do you balance then? In, in a task that is not morbid, 
but a task that sort of deals with finality. How do you balance that side out so that you're not... Well, let's be honest, on uh, 20 floor oxetine and sitting in a corner shaking in a mess <laughs> in the middle of a uh, round padded room. Um, how do you find your way back? Oh, gosh. Um, I suppose it's by making sure that I take time out for me and to look after me, first of all. Right. So I have family time and really strong family values, um, which is why I work from home. But then I also make sure that, like, um, recently, oh, recently, yeah. recently, recently, I got COVID, and with my temperature, <laughs> I enrolled in the burlesque troupe in Whangarei. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so we've kind of been going from casting and going, that's so sad, and then at night going, ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you have to still be able to have your joy and have your your good moments and look after your spirit because if you don't the whole lot consumes you yeah yeah so. uh, yeah and i could imagine that someone like that would be mentally tough to deal with Can on a be, daily yeah. basis so having something that allows you to bounce back yeah you know, would be a huge relief. And then I get to paint heaps of kick-ass stuff and go to cool events there and, you go. and see people's weird toys that they want painted. It's it, these are age appropriate and uh, most of like them normal. Yeah, yeah, right, cool. Yeah, I'm most, just checking. Yeah, it's, like <laughs> it's a loaded week, word nowadays. I've got an aeroplane to paint next week. What? Yeah, so we're going from like this week's coffins. So there's a uh -huh. casket in my studio at the moment. And then next week will be aeroplanes. Yeah. And then the week after we'll be doing a mural up at a resort in Tutacaca. So oh, wow. it's cool because like as a customs artist, because the job and this is what people don't get, like a customs artist, because it's putting any picture on any surface, yeah. it bounces all around the place. Yeah. It's beautiful. It crosses across so many mediums, but also pisses off so many mediums because... Why not? Well, I think sometimes... I think sometimes I've gone to a few shows and um, in stall holders and it's been really great art shows, but um, it's a bit on the nose when someone can take your painting and paint it on someone's car yeah, and... Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm a bit of a photocopier, which isn't always seen as good in the arts. No. Sometimes it's kind of slammed a bit, well, but it makes me a living. Yeah, I do sure. still love the fantasy work. Yep. That's my favourite. There you go. Yeah, but it's mostly not what I do. You so. know what? It's great money in art forgeries. Yeah. Good times. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> Steal it like an artist. Wasn't that Picasso? Uh, yes. Picasso also said the chief enemy of creativity is good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yep. <laughs> um, Julia, thank you so much for coming in and joining us. Uh, this has been an absolute hoot. I had no idea where we were going to go. So this has been a real thrill for us. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, I've loved being here. It's so great our talk went from up. To down to yep. up and yeah, and here we end up. It's a good roller coaster of life. <laughs> it is and beautiful. death and life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>There you go, folks. As I said, what a life, you know, filled with some amazing highs, you know, having, you know, starting essentially her own circus um, through to, you know, being so gracious and generous to open up about the the, the tragedy um, of, of losing of losing a child. And, you know, she doesn't shy away from it. She, she talks about it. Um, you know, not in a dark, brooding, Batman kind of way, but in a way that really celebrates um, the life that was there and kind of everything that's happened afterwards. It's amazing. It's amazing. Such a wonderful human being. Um, yeah, Julia, thank you so much. I'm going to flick to my camera. You know, I, I, I took a... As I, as I always say, we always try and learn something new from every podcast. I've learned... Tons of stuff from all the artists that we've interviewed from from the very first one up until this one. It's it's one of those things we we sometimes we learn small bits of information sometimes we learn, sometimes we learn big bits of information. Today I learned a ton 
and it was amazing. I, I feel very, very um, I feel actually I feel really lucky. I feel very honored and privileged that Julia was so super cool and um, opening up. So where can you guys find um, this podcast and the host of other podcasts that we've had in the past and what we've got coming on in the future? Well, here we go. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, all under Northland Artists Conversation. For the audio side of things, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Again, Northland Artists Conversation. And if you're an artist that would love the opportunity to come in and sit down, or if you've even been on the podcast before, we'd love to have you back. Or if you know someone that would make an excellent guest, please, 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 Please feel free to email us hello at northlandartistsconversation.co.nz. Super simple. Now, <clears throat> if you want to give back a little bit to the podcast and say, hey, you know what? What you guys do is actually pretty cool. We'd like to support you. Well, congratulations. You can, and we'd love to have you. Um, we also have a Patreon page. We have two tiers on there. The first tier we have is called cup of coffee that's five bucks a month and you know we appreciate all the support um that would be awesome second tier we have is what we've affectionately called a coffee addict uh now that's 20 bucks a month um, but what that gives you that gives you a few extras a few extras that you don't get with the the five dollar one um so you will get um, a shout out on the podcast which i'll do after this um you also get to know in advance who will be coming out and if you have a question that you would like me to ask the guest, email that. Uh, it gives you the option to email it through, and um, I'm happy to do that for you. So, who are the patrons? Here we go. Big shout out to number one, the OG Patreon supporter, Lauren Roach. Thank you so much. Second shout out goes to Michael Boda, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, very, very cool. Third one is uh, Maggie Coco. Um, who knows where Maggie is at the moment? She's probably playing music somewhere around New Zealand or Australia, or, or actually, or even the States. Wonderfully talented um, lady and such a cool supporter. And last, we've got a fourth one, um, Jenny Purchase. Thank you so much uh, for jumping on board. Really appreciate it. It's amazing. Um, now, where can you find us? Well, I'm going to give you two ways. The first way is to go to Google, type in Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Go to the top right-hand corner, uh, log in, create an account, then type in Northland Artists Conversation. Pick the tier that's going to work best for you and then happy days. Second way you can find us is nice and simple, www.patreon.com forward slash Northland Artist Conversation. Log in, create an account, pick your tier, go from there. Nice and easy. It's very cool. I'm going to flick to my camera, oh, the wide actually, and I'm going to have a cough. <coughs> Tis the time of year for bugs and flu, but I'm not sick. It's just, um, yeah. When you when you do a lot of talking and stuff like that, eventually your throat gets a bit sore after a while. But yeah, so what are we leading? We're leading into winter is coming to a close, thankfully. Spring is just around the corner. Hallelujah. Um, and you know, warm days, longer, longer days as well, more sunshine. Man, coming through, looking forward to it. It's great, love it. So on behalf of myself and the entire... Northland Artist Conversation team, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys real soon.